Hi, thanks everyone. Welcome to the OCP NIC workshop. Today, I'm Damien. I'm going to talk about what's now for OCP NIC and the future. For this track, I will be presenting as part of an OCP NIC subgroup lead, and the works here are from the community, it's not myself alone. I also work for Meta, but for this one, I'm representing the group. Before we talk about now and future, let's look back to the past one year, what did we do and what achievement that we have. October last year, we have finally alignment with the system vendor and the NIC vendor on a commonly agreed what is the PCI Gen 5 loss budget on the NIC. As you can see, this is actually a tug of war. The system vendor will say, hey, NIC vendor, you, you do less. You have less budget. The NIC vendor will say, I want to have more budget. So this is a tug of war and we finally align on October, which aligned to SFF have a 7 dB loss budget, and then for large form factor is 9.5 dB. This is actually a reduction from a common PCIe CAM loss budget. And in the same month, we investigated into the taller form factor that both Nick and Hassan has been mentioning about. We started with three candidates with 17.8, 18.1, as well as the 20.1. In November last year, we participated in the OCP Tech Week. And in November, which is just a month after the introduction, we quickly narrowed down from three to two because the 18.1 millimeter are actually too close to 17.8. And we eliminated that option very quickly. In the same month, we have published the revision 1.1 of our spec, which basically captured the PCI Gen 5 loss budget that we, I just mentioned earlier. In March, after months of renegotiation, we have come down to one form factor, which is the 17.8 millimeter height that we want to add. This is mainly from consideration of we want to double stack the NIC in the one IU form factor, which is the major driver of why this form factor versus the other. In this month, we also have created a first generation of a mechanical test fixture. Why I say first? Because in the latest slide, you will see there's another. So this is actually pretty good in terms of margin, things it work, but it is really heavy because it's made of metal, and we cannot see where it's a violation because it's made of metal. And between March and April, we sent a survey to the community to say, hey, we have a line to 70.8 millimeter, does it make sense for us to include in the spec? And we also asked about large form factor, do you use it, do you plan to have it? Just to get the community check, we are, like we always do every year. And like just now, what come out from Hassan and Yin was really about the thermal work group that we regenerate. Because we did find that different companies have different ways to simulate temperature, different way and different place that we measure. And when we talk, we talk average or you talk max, there's so many things that are not aligned. So Yin lead the team to regenerate um, the thermal work group. And in June, this year, Molex joined us at a 16 contributing company. Thanks, Molex. And I'm not sure that whether I can use your logo, so I did not. <laughs> and yeah, in July this year, this is the second revision of mechanical fit test fixture, which is now clear, make an art click, that we can actually see through where the violation is, if there's any. And this is also in the demo in the OCP experience lab. In July, we have published uh, revision 1.1.1, which released candidate and asked for feedback. Mainly what is in here is talking about the torsion factor, and also one pretty controversial change that we make in there is called Nick self-shutdown. Because of its controversial, different companies have different opinion, and ultimately we decided this is not ready to return your spec because we are not aligned. And in the Ref 1.2 spec that we published in spec September, we only published the torsion factor and minor uh, spec update. As well, for the next cell shutdown, we actually pulled it out because we are not aligned. We wouldn't want to write something that we don't align as a community. So this is what we did for the past one year. And what we are doing, what are we doing now? Because we added the torsion factor, it allowed us to do more on the Bionic initiative. 
This form factor is suitable to be anything you want a high bandwidth, you want to have like cable up solution. This is a pretty good form factor. But I want to stress that there's no intent for this form factor to take over the world. The intent is when it makes sense, do consider this form factor. One of the use case is a PCI retirement that I get feedback from. That it's good, in the past we have done it in the mass 2.0 form factor, but this form factor is a bit tight if we do a small form factor itself. We cannot fit the mini SAS HD, which is very popular in the retirement market. So with the introduction of TOS form factor, other than the primary use case is to tackle thermal challenges, it also enables use, new use cases like the mini SAS HD. And on top of that, while not leading in the slide, there's also other use cases like now CPFD is also possible to be used. This has started, and in fact, we have two demos in our OCP experience lab that this look like a NIC, but they are not a NIC. They are actually storage HBA. One of them connected to copper from uh, Broadcom, another connected through fiber channel from Marvel. So the revolution is started. And we added PCI Gen 5 capability into a NIC card. So to support that, we need some kind of CLB and CBB for you to test SI test fixture. I would say we are a little late on this, but then the CLB has been sent out for community review and we get good feedback from our community and what are need to be changed, what are the minor things that we need to reroute. The CBB is expected to send out for the community review in December, which is just after right Thanksgiving. Currently, this design is led by Dell, and I'm really thankful for them for working on this area on behalf of the group. And as well as we added the toss more hole factor, now we need a new test fixture, right? So not really. By changing three components of the existing small hole factor test fixture, we able to support this toss hole factor with a dual stacking testing. And this has been sent for the community review, and we will update it to the wiki shortly. So well, those are things that we're working now. And what about the, the future? What are we working on? So there are a couple of things that we, work, we want to work on for the next. And obviously, as a NIC card, we will want to increase the speed. But there are a couple areas. So obviously, the PCI host interface currently is PCI Gen 5. The next phase will be PCI Gen 6. And there are additional challenges. And one other thing that I heard from the community that talk about our bank interface is like, we do support a very good NCSI interface through RBT5, um, but we are currently using IMRI pin definition, which we are limited to 100 megabits um, per second. So this is actually a little bit aging, and there are folks asking me, that, are we going to plan to move to 1G or not? So I have taken those into a part of wish list, and we will consider whether we can implement those in the next one. And of course, network service. Currently, we have 400G, and the next, we will actually work on 800G. And for management area, so um, we did talk about just now that we wanted to have the NIC have some kind of self protection, like NIC self shutdown that we did not align with different companies. Those are areas we will work on. Currently, in the spec, we leave it very vague, but it's optional. But I think this is actually important for NIC to protect itself. And for security area, obviously, there's never ending story. We do have attestation with SPDM that's currently demo in our OCP experience lab. But moving forward, we move more on those areas. In the past, we have always gathered feedback through a monthly meeting and a once a year kind of a survey. But now, I think what we need to do is more like we need to do continuous feedback from the, from the community. So we have one this Google form that, based on the URL, this tiny URL feedback to OCP, that you click onto it, that you will be able to fill in a Google form that asks you, you want to file a bug report, you want to give a comment, do you have a wish list, do you have any improvement? So feel free to feedback to us so we can capture it in our discussion and put it in the bin list. The next I want to talk a little bit more is the OCP uh, lab experience demo we have quite a bit of discussion and as well as an area for demo what we have done so far in the OCP experience lab. 
So as you can see, we do have like multi-host um, server a demo from Budcom. We do have like device attestation using SPDM, which is security related from between Budcom and Meta. Um, we do have a pretty beefy 12 next slot server that's being shown by Meta as well. The mechanical, mechanical TV text fixture, fiber channel HBA demo by OCP Nick subgroup. The, the 400 NIC in total factor, we do have a plaque, but then the actual NIC unfortunately uh, did not manage to ship over to us. Um, we do have an interface sandbox from TE that gives you a different kind of connector, cable arm, direct connection, and as well as one collaboration between two subgroups, ODSA subgroup and o OCP NIC subgroup, we work together to demo the ODA board. That's pretty cool. Um, please, please check it out. The call to action is to join us in this, what we can do in the future. And obviously, join our monthly call, which happened on the first Wednesday of every month, will be beneficial. And next thing is to join us in the mailing list. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we now we want to gather your feedback um, throughout the year, and please use the Google form to give us those feedback. And that is the end of my presentation. I will take any questions if you have time.